Brian C. Jones, Senior Minister of the Newburgh Church of Christ here in beautiful Louisville, Kentucky. The title to today's teaching is Judas and the Blessed Messiah. Happy Easter. We hope and pray this word blesses your life. May God bless you. Beloved, the most significant week in human history occurred on a Friday with the humiliating death of Jesus Christ by crucifixion, followed by his burial in a borrowed tomb that was sealed with a stone, guarded by a Roman official, but culminated with the triumphant resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This historical significance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is indeed incalculable when quantifying its spiritual value for those of us who are believers in the historical account of Jesus Christ. Church, our blessed Messiah, here it is, got up from the dead. I said he got up from the dead. They killed him, but death could not hold him because Jesus got up, we can trust that God will also get us up in the resurrection. Beloved, there is an endless amount of detail pertaining to the events which led to Jesus' arrest shortly before his crucifixion on a tree that time, unfortunately, would not allow us to explicate in totality. But there are indeed some principles in Scripture of how Jesus got to the cross through the betrayal of one of his disciples that I truly believe will resonate with you and not only to help us value Jesus' sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection, but also to help us uh, carry those values as we live our lives. So if I had to give this teaching and text a title today, it would simply be Judas and the Blessed Messiah. Yeah. Judas and the Blessed Messiah. One of the carefully chosen close confidants of Christ was a disciple by the name of Judas Iscariot. Judas was indeed the son of a man by the name of Simon. And it's this Judas that is inextricably connected to the redemption narrative and story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, though he was a disciple of Jesus, Judas was targeted by Satan. I know that's right because in Luke chapter 22 and verse number three, church, you'll find these words. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the 12 in John chapter 13, verse Two, you'll find these words during supper so your enemies will eat with you yeah, yeah. let me say it one more time during supper the devil having already put into the heart of Jesus J Judas Iscariot the son of Simon to betray him so you see my friends Judas was connected to the redemption story of Jesus and I want you to know that typically women don't name their children the name Judas because of the association of his name because of what he did. Because the name represents a person's character, role, uh, reputation, and authority. However, in the life of Jesus, Judas, catch this, gives us a picture of humanity, but Jesus gives us a picture of divinity. Did you catch that? Judas gives us a picture a snapshot, a moment suspended in time, but Jesus gives us a picture of divinity. Beloved, if you were to do an MRI on chapters 26 through 28 of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, in Judas, we see the worst of humanity, but in Jesus, we see the best, I can't get no help, of humanity. So this is why it is necessary for Jesus to come 
because Judas gives us this picture of humanity and you and I are a part of humanity. So Judas shows us the worst of humanity, but Jesus shows us the best of humanity through his divinity. Now, when you talk about humanity, I want you to go over again to Matthew 26, verse number 14. And I'm going to read this slow and see if I could break it down for you so you can understand the need for Jesus to come and save us from the worst of humanity. When you look at verse number 14 of Matthew 26, church, there you find these words. I want you to go slow with me. The Bible says, then one of the twelve. See, sometimes your Judas is in your inner circle. Uh, are y'all hearing me on today? And I don't know if you have uh, experience dealing with the Judas in your life, but today I hope I can help somebody. So we understand he was one in his inner circle. The text says, named Judas Iscariot, watch this, went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give to me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. From then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. So not only do we see that uh, the devil will send people and come into people's heart in your inner circle, we see here that Judas had an opportunistic agenda. Why, Brother Jones? Because he was looking for an opportunity. Can I tell about 30 of you online right now, even though you would give your house up for some folks, even though you would give your last dime for some people that you love who are close to you, sometimes the devil will enter into their heart because they're looking for an opportunity to betray you. And then the, the Bible says in verse number, uh, please catch this in verse number 14, the Bible says, uh, that Judas went to the chief priest, which tells us that he had intentional betrayal. Why? Because he intentionally went to the enemies of Jesus seeking to betray him. And don't get it twisted. When they ask, uh, you know, he asked them, what are you willing uh, to give me to betray to him? The Bible says they weighed out 30 pieces of silver and so there's some folk that will betray you over monetary compensation. Are y'all okay this morning? And so I need somebody to see that I'm describing to you a microcosm of humanity. There's some folk out there in the world that will do their best to formulate an opportunistic agenda. They're in your inner circle. Their intent is to betray you and they want some money. And you got to understand that. So don't you fall out with folk from the church. Don't you fall out with people on your job. Don't you fall out with people on, in your family. Because this is a picture of humanity. This is how humanity acts and behaves. So it lets us know that if humanity is this way, when you do everything you can to show them who you are, to show them that you love them, to show them that you would help them out, but humanity still would do you this way. So it teaches and tells us as children of God that we have a need for divinity. We have a need for the divine. We have a need for one who is connected as the deity of Jesus Christ and God Almighty. And because in humanity, we, uh, we see that humanity has desires. Am I right about it? Wants. And we crave tangible uh, assets. Don't look at me funny. Uh, humanity craves power, uh -huh. influence, control. Come get this fame, attention, glory, significance. That's a picture of humanity. And I need you to know that Judas went so far, when you look over in Matthew 26, Judas went so far to betray God in the flesh. I want you to catch this now because I want you to see humanity, because I want you to leave this stream having a better understanding of why God had to send Jesus because humanity is really a fallen race. Uh-huh. I need us to understand that. So we all need Jesus. So Matthew 26 verse uh, 48 says, uh, let's go back over to verse number 47. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, 
One of the twelve came up accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who came from the chief priests and elders of the people. He was working with the religious leaders of that day who hated our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But let me look at verse number 48, please. Verse number 48 says, Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign saying, Whomever I kiss. Are y'all in this place? I used to do a sermon years ago called The Autopsy of a Kiss. Wow. You don't even know why some folks giving you a kiss. I'm, I'm confusing somebody today. You're looking at, listen, 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 let me tell you. He identified his enemy through a kiss. And if you do a CT scan on this kiss, it was not because he loved him. He was trying to use that kiss as a symbol to identify that this is the man I'm seeking to betray. Unbelievable. Now I need you to understand that because I'm trying to show you the need in the world for Jesus. Because let me just tell you something. You know the story. He was carried to Caiaphas and then he was carried over to Pilate and he was beaten and mocked and spat upon and ridiculed and accused of blasphemy, but he never opened his mouth. And I need somebody to understand something about people. Somebody online just type in people. Yeah, somebody just shout or type in people because let me tell you something about people. Before this occurred, uh, Jesus came in on Palm Sunday riding on a donkey and the folks were so excited they were shouting Hosanna is king, but on Friday they were shouting crucify him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something about people because I don't want you to fall out with the church. I don't want you to fall out with Christ. Jesus is demonstrating the best of humanity and the best of divinity and Judas is demonstrating the worst of humanity. And so it is until you and I learn about humanity, you, humanity, you will never appreciate the need and the necessary coming of Jesus Christ to save us from folk like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So we see that they shouted Hosanna one day. Yeah. You know, save us. And they were saying that Jesus was their king. But then they shouted crucify him on Friday. So the folks, some of the folks you're close to, they will praise you one day. I can't get nothing through here. And on the next day, they will be trying to dig your grave. you got to understand how humanity works. And I don't want you to give up on God, but it helps us understand something powerful about God. Because Jesus is still our blessed Messiah. So when you look at Jesus, Jesus is a picture, a snapshot a photograph, a moment suspended in time of humanity, the best of humanity, and the best of divinity. Because while you look at Jesus, Jesus was 100% man, but he was also 100% God in the flesh, all right? And I need us to understand that. So what Jesus does for us is help us see how much he had to endure to save humanity. So when you look at the life of Jesus, you will find punishment that Jesus, watch this, had to endure for humanity. Brothers and sisters, come with me to Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 27. I want to read a, a few verses into your spirit because I'm trying to get you to appreciate Jesus. I'm trying to get you to see what's in this world. I'm trying to get you to see God's love for humanity, even though humanity was running amok and sinful and just doing shameful things, even to the best that he had, the son of the living God. The Bible says in verse number 27, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Verse 30, they spat on him. Wow. One of the most degraded yeah. acts that you could display on a person, which is despicable, is to spit, to gather your saliva yeah. and spit it on another human being. Wow. That's 
what they did for Jesus. I want you to see the juxtaposition. Judas shows us the worst of humanity, but Jesus shows us the best of humanity. That's why you got to love him. Because Jesus, watch this, endured being spat on. Close your eyes right now. Just close your eyes right now and imagine being Jesus, feeling spit on your face. They grab their fist and they use their fist to hit him in the face. They slapped his face. Could you imagine being Jesus, having done nothing wrong to be spat upon, to be hit in the face knowing that you have not done what they have accused you of and they slapped them in the face and then they put the crown over him and put a robe around him and they said prophesy and tell us which one hit you and they were mocking him but Jesus endured it. The question brothers and sisters is why did Jesus endure that shame? That humiliation. Why did Jesus do it? I need somebody to grab a mirror after the service because I want you to grab that mirror, brothers and sisters, and I want you to look at your face and just open up your mouth and say, he did it for me. Somebody shout, he did it for me. He did it for me because he wanted to show us the best of humanity, even though we are surrounded by the worst of humanity. So brothers and sisters, if you're listening, you're witnessing, you're watching, and you're worshiping, right now I need you to see this picture of our messianic master. And sometimes when you're going through difficulties in life, we got to look at Jesus because we have to tell ourselves if the God who loved us and saved us had to endure that and we don't have to usually endure that. At least I can make it on my journey. At least I can put up with some folk. At least I don't have to cut up and cuss and cut and show out. Because I understand how humanity works. Look at Jesus as our model. And so he had to go through that. But when you look at his divinity, that is the state of quality of being divine in conjunction with being God as a deity. See, you see God's through Jesus. You see God's unconditional love for humanity. For him to take that kind of punishment, you know that he wanted to accomplish the will of his father because it's hard to sit there and take somebody slapping you. It's hard to stand there, not lift your arm, not lift your feet, not even move when somebody is spitting on you and hitting on you. You know in his mind he had a goal. He wanted to accomplish doing the will of his father because he had you in mind. He had me in mind. He had the sins of the world in mind. And even though in Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 42, Jesus uh, shortly before his arrest, Jesus asked the father for another way, but he says yet not my will, but your will. Come on in here and help me this morning. Your will shall be done. And so we find God's unconditional love for humanity in Jesus. We find grace in Jesus. We find forgiveness in Jesus. We find mercy and patience and knowledge in Jesus. So if you juxtapose the worst of humanity in terms of what Judas did when he de betrayed Jesus as one in his inner circle, notice what Jesus did that shows us the best of humanity. We see he gave grace to those who betrayed him. Now, now I wish I could park and preach here for a moment because it would be difficult and hard for some of us. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me this morning and I understand why for us to be able to do that but we have to look at Jesus and what he did for us. So we see he gave grace to those 
uh, who betrayed him. And I'm telling you, I'm going to give you some motivation to do that in just a moment before I take my seat. We find that he was not trying to do a negative opportunistic agenda. Jesus was after a kingdom agenda. Uh huh. And then we find that Judas tried to have an intentional betrayal against Jesus. And what Jesus was out for was the intentional forgiveness. Of us, those who have sinned. And Jesus was not looking for any monetary compensation. Jesus was looking for some spiritual compensation. He knew that because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, that you and I could receive the forgiveness of our sins. Can I get a praise right now that we could open up our mouths and lips and tell God, thank you that you went through what you went through because nobody else could go through what Jesus went through so we could be saved and forgiven. My, my, my. My, my, my. When you just look and you just learn at what Jesus had to go through, it should make us better. I'm telling you, when we get back into this building, some of y'all need to be 15, 30 minutes ahead of time getting back in here. Why, Brother Jones? Because something has changed in me. The more I know about the sacrifice of Jesus, something is in my spirit that is convicting me that I need to do better. And if Jesus had to go through all that for little old me and all the stuff that I've done in my life, the least that I could do. Is commit my life to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ while I sojourn on this earth. And so we see the best of humanity through Jesus' divinity. Because I need somebody to understand with Jesus, you need to know there will always be some folk who are out to kill your dreams. Kill your plans, your efforts, your goals. And because they understand that you are seeking to do uh, God's will, has there ever been anybody in your life that tried to disrupt your progress, that tried, I can't hit nothing, that tried to disrupt your agenda, that tried to disrupt your goals and doing God's will in your life? If you're online right now and you've had a Judas in your life, just open up your uh, text right there and just say, uh, I understand. Just say, I understand. I've been there before, Brother Jones. I know what you're talking about. Could have been somebody on your job, somebody in your family, somebody got a knife and should have been patting you on the back, but they was stabbing you in the back and you never thought it would have come from them. You never thought you, somebody would have opened up their mouth and told you that it was that person who did it. But guess what? You can't stop there. You got to keep going. You got to keep it moving because let me just tell you something. God never allowed what Judas did for Jesus to stop Jesus. Yeah, your Judas. Somebody online just type, uh, my Judas can't stop me. Go ahead. My Judas can't stop me. One more time. My Judas can't stop me. Yeah, my Judas. My Judas can't stop me because God got too much power. And I want somebody to stay with Jesus, stay with Christianity, because there will always be people that the devil could use. Because the text says in Luke 22 and verse number 3 that Satan entered into the heart of Judas. So he knows who to enter. But here's what I find so interesting. What the devil did to Jesus doesn't compare to what God was going to do for Jesus. Lord have mercy. Come with me to Matthew 28. I got to get out of here. And verse number five, the Bible says this is after uh, Jesus hung, bled, and uh, died for the sins of the world, buried in Joseph's new tomb. And everybody experienced the saddest day of their life. Darkness appeared over the whole wide earth. And the Bible says in verse number five, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Don't you fret. Don't you get overcast down. Don't you worry. For I know you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified, but he's not here. Somebody online just type in, he's not here. He has left the building. He's left the tomb. He is no longer there, for he had risen. Somebody shout, he's risen. Aren't you glad God had so much power that he wouldn't let death hold on to Jesus no more time? God had the power to loose him from death. Death, where is your sting? He got up from the grave. The Bible said he is 
risen and if Jesus can get up, I know I can get up. If they try to get me down, I know I can get back up because God has the power to get us up. Thank God for his power to get us up. And God and the devil used Judas. Did you hear that? God and the devil used Judas. So I need you to know if you ever have anybody in your Christian journey that tries to block and stop and cause you to stop your journey doing God's will, I want you to keep going. And because many a time we get so frustrated over what folk try to do, I will even tell you, even in ministry, people will overlook the good that you do and with most people, you only have one time to do one thing that they don't like. But you could do 2,000 things that they should be patting you on the back for. But just do one thing they don't like and there'll be a Judas in your life. Hey, Amen, somebody. They'll try anything. They'll try anything. They'll try anything to stop your forward movement, your progression in life. But I don't want nobody to stop what you're doing when people in your life come up like that. Because I just need you to know, even though the devil can use a Judas in your life, God could use him too. I'm reminded. This is not a slide, but I want to give you this in your spirit. In Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20, when Joseph had risen to being second in command to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, we find, brothers and sisters, that Joseph told his brothers, what you meant for evil. God meant it for good. What you, the folk on your job, the folk in your family, the people who post crazy stuff about you online, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Because God can take the devil using you and then God can turn around and use you. And he did it with Judas and Jesus. So Jesus is still a blessed Messiah, even though he had to suffer and go through some things while he was headed to the cross to die for our sins. So I want somebody out there to understand that Paul says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, and we know, I said, this is an intellectual phenomenon. You need to be educated because Paul says, and we know, you got to know that God causes all things to work together uh, for good, to, for good, for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God can work it out. Is anybody online willing to type in, he can work it out? I don't know about you. You need to have some faith, some faith and open up your Bible and say, he's working it out. I don't know about you. I just, somebody in this place just shout, he's working it out. He's working it out. God is working it out. I know you was trying to do something against me, but he's working it out. Don't you stop working. Because God doesn't stop working. And let me just tell you, you and I may not be able to see it. We may not be able to know and understand how God could allow it to come to fruition. But God is always working. When the devil uses them to do something bad, God could use those same people to do something good. Because God is always working. So Jesus was blessed to have a father who he knew had the power and he could believe in who promised to raise him John chapter number 13 I gotta take my seat in verse number 3 church you'll find these words I hope and pray that they're encouraging to you John chapter 13 and verse number 3 the Bible says I'm gonna slow this down because I think this is a powerful point that's pregnant with information for us to hold our faith uh, intact the Bible says in verse number 3 of John 13 Jesus Catch this now, knowing, somebody shout knowing. If you don't, you only line, just type knowing. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things <laughs> Woo! into his hands. Can I tell you? Let me tell you something. Jesus went through what he went through because he knew he had a love for humanity, but he also had a love for his father. And he knew that the father
father had promised him some things. And he knew that the father had already given him all that he needed in his hands. And I don't know about you. I don't know about you. If you're a child that got baptized, got the gift of the Holy Spirit, you know through the word of God, God will give you everything you need in this Christian journey to make it. He'll give some love into your spirit. I can't hear that. He'll give you some joy. He'll give you some singing in your, off your lips. Amen, somebody. He'll put some praying in your knees. God knows how to give you what you need to make it in this Christian journey. So Jesus knew that God had already given him everything that he needed. So Jesus was able to go through what he went through. Because let me just tell you something. When God is on your side and you know God has resurrection power, you can go from troubled to triumphant. Dead to alive. Wounded but winning. Barely making it, but now you're busting moves. Amen, somebody. Unforgiven to forgiven. Come on in here, uh, young folk. Ratchet to righteous. Amen, somebody. Falling away, but now you're falling in the way. Amen, somebody. Brother Jones, what are you telling me to do with this sermon? You always give us applications. I know I'm glad you asked for it. Here it is. It's so simple. You can miss it. Write it down. Take a mental note. Put it in the corridors of your mind. Do God's will. What I believe, brothers and sisters, helped Jesus, what helped Jesus go through what he went through for you and I, he was committed, come in here somebody, to do God's will. That's why he said, yet not my will, but your will will be done. And when you know, see what I, I think we have to do, we have to get our eternal binoculars out. And when you pull out your eternal binoculars, you can start looking down in your future and you can see that there's going to be a judgment day one day and you're going to stand before Jesus one day and you don't want to be one that has already given up because you had a Judas in your life and you stopped because your Judas was trying you. You stopped because you let Judas get to you. Jesus did not allow Judas to stop him. As a matter of fact, Jesus knew uh, that God was using Judas. Because he was a necessary tool to get Jesus to the cross. Uh-huh. And I need us to understand that everything that you and I deal with and go through, God could use. And I need us to understand it is all about doing uh, God's will. Because God will move heaven and earth to accomplish his will. And God uh, helps us understand through the person of Jesus that Jesus had love for humanity. It, I don't know if you can kind of recall what I just tried to articulate a few minutes ago, but it's hard to love a person who spit on you. It's, it's, it's hard to love people who do things against you so hurtful, so degrading, and, and, and mentally we have to try to navigate through the minefield of the hurt that we've experienced just to have a glimpse of the word of God to remind us of what Jesus did because sometimes you can get so deep into being a victim. You could forget you already got the victory. And I need us to understand this is just a picture. This is just a snapshot, a moment in time that's suspended for us to look at in our Bibles of humanity. So many a times we have this false expectation because we want to see the best of humanity. But many a time we see the worst of humanity. And I want to Flip the mirror real quick because many a time we like to look past us at somebody else. But you and I have afflicted some people before through our negative behavior in humanity. Have you ever considered how much hurt you have caused somebody in their own humanity? Have you ever considered how you have made other folk feel in their own humanity? See, this is where it get quiet at through here. 
Because we love it. We love it when we hear Bible verses about what folk do to us. But man, you can drop a pin in the room when we start talking about what we've done to other folk. And so just because you know that person needs Jesus because of what they did to you, guess what, baby? You need Jesus just as much because he going to get you for what you have done in your sin. So we all need Jesus. Amen, somebody. So I need you to know what got Jesus through. I believe, I believe, I believe was doing God's will. Because I know that God will move heaven and earth to do it. But let me just tell you something. We have to do like Jesus and seek to be impactful while we sojourn on this earth. And brothers and sisters, I want to really take my time here because many a time we seek not just to be impactful, we seek to be impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it again. Yeah. Don't just seek to be impressive, seek to be impactful. Yeah. Because the danger is when you seek to be impressive mm -hmm. instead of impactful for the kingdom, you can go from purpose to performance. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you're seeking to be impressive mm -hmm. instead of impactful for the kingdom, you can start out doing it with purpose on your heart, but then you can end up going into performance. And performance can land you in a dangerous place. I'm going to give you seven observations that we could learn from Jesus being the best of humanity and divinity. And as we compare that to what Judas did, showing us the worst of humanity. The first thing is you need to know the power of God our Father. Can I tell you what's going to help you today and tomorrow and every day of the week if you're reminded of it? You need to know the power, the power of God, our Father. God knows how to move some things around. He knows how to shake up some stuff. What, what messes us up is we can't figure out a way to make the situation better and whole and healthy, but we need to trust in God, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Number two, God, whew, this is good, has resurrection power. Anybody happy about that out there today? That God has resurrection power. So when we talk about resurrection, we're talking about the power of to raise that which is dead to life. So this is not an ordinary observation when we talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus because it teaches and tells us that we can have resurrections in our lives. And I don't know about you, when you start looking, when over yonder, start looking better than the right now, when you get about 80 or 90, Oh, I can't hear nothing here right now. When you get a little older and body start breaking down and you don't have the drive or desire to do what you used to do and over yonder start looking better than right now, yeah. you're going to want to think about heaven then. And you're going to start getting concerned yeah. about where you're going to spend eternity. But I heard a preacher say, listen, they build caskets for young folk too. Don't get too twisted on that because let me just tell you, every time you have an opportunity and encounter with Jesus, we want the best, but we always have to consider uh, the reality of our mortality. And I'm glad today that I serve a God that has resurrection power. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thought to know that he can get folk who have died out the grave. He can put a decomposed, dematerialized body back together. He got that kind of power. The stone that was guarded by a stone was more powerful than the stone of Jesus Christ that was inside the stone 
was more powerful than the stone on the outside of the stone that was on the inside. And if I'm confusing you, Jesus Christ was the stone that was on the inside and he was guarded by a stone that was on the outside. But God has the power to move some stones in your life that's trying to stop you from moving forward and accomplish his will. What are you saying, Brother Jones? I'm trying to get out of here. God got a resurrection power. And so that's some loved ones, church. That have gone on. <laughs> and it pains us, man. I'll tell you something about death. When you know people that you've loved have gone on. But you start to look back at their faith. And you start to look back at how dedicated to Jesus Christ they were. And what gives you some hope. What gives you some confidence. Is to know that when the final roundup of human affairs takes place. If you live right. And if you be faithful to Jesus, and if you keep your faith in Jesus, just like your loved one who's going on to be what the Lord did, and though they have went upstairs now, don't worry about it. Because of the power of the resurrection, you'll be able to see them again. Amen, somebody. Yeah, Lord. So Jesus' resurrection is proof for our resurrection. Jesus says in John chapter number 6, and verse number 44, no one comes to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up in the last day for it is written in the prophets and they shall all uh, be taught of God. What are you saying, Jesus? Jesus says, I will raise him up in the last day. So you and I have a resurrection coming one day. Number four, love challenges your endurance. When I ask you to close your eyes, I want you to see how it may feel just in mentally in your mind of having to take that kind of punishment. But Jesus endured that punishment because he had love for you and I. So love is not just about the folk you like. Sometimes love is enduring being around the folks who don't like you and you don't even like them like that. But you got to love everybody. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Number five, Jesus desired to please his father. And when you desire to please the God who brought you out the strip club, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> let me hoop for a minute in here. Do you remember when you got paid on a Friday night? Oh, let me stop. Let me, let me tell you something about our God. Listen, when he cleans you up from all that kind of stuff, you ought to be willing to do everything you can to please your heavenly father. Amen. Number six, celebrate yeah. the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It needs to be celebrated yeah. that he sacrificed his life a little old me. Number seven, your Judas could be a part of God's providence. Yeah. Can I tell you, your Judas, and I, everybody should have one. If you've lived just a little while on this earth by now, if you've made it beyond kindergarten, praise God. Yeah, you should have a Judas by now. But your Judas could be a part of God's providence in your life. I'm reminded of Psalm chapter 41. And what the psalmist said in verse number 9. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Just know, don't you stop your faith in Jesus. Don't you stop your work. Don't you stop doing God's will. Because God could use your Judas through his providence. Here it is, I'm done. I'm closing now. I'm landing. Jesus is our blessed Messiah. Mm, church, he was, still, he was still blessed, although he had to go through all of that pain, all of that torture, all of that humiliation, all of that suffering. I need you to know he did it for you. He died for you. Even though he was a blessed Messiah, he was burdened for you. And Jesus died for you. If I can just get this to be stamped on your mind today, it, it, it will be this, this simple phrase. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. And when you rationalize that statement intellectually, man, you got to be somebody in the eyes of God, knowing what you've done, 
knowing where you've been, knowing what you've been through, knowing fires he pulled you out of, the Lord has been good. He's been good because he was willing to die for you. After three days, death could no longer hold Jesus because God sent him to show us the best of humanity through his divinity. Now, there's an appropriate response to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because many times people get so excited about Easter and so excited about God raising Jesus from the dead, and rightfully so. Yeah. But don't stop there, because as excited as we are about how God had us in mind before he ever uh, created the foundation of the earth, God also had in mind a response. Somebody just type in a response. A response to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's what's so interesting. I truly believe this. I believe, I just believe, that if Judas had not hung himself, that Judas could have got forgiven for betraying the very same blessed Messiah that he betrayed. So the lesson is, no matter what you've done, <laughs> don't you ever give up. Because on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Here's what we find. We find the same people who shouted crucify him. God loved them so much to save those very people who shouted crucify him. Because I'm going to tell you something about people. They'll shout Hosanna one day and crucify you the next day. That's why the only thing that makes sense is God and Jesus. I'm done preaching. Here's your response to Jesus. If you appreciate that he died for you, the death, burial, and resurrection. God's word tells us to believe in that. Believe in that with all of your heart. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 35, when the unit said that I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, you must be willing to believe in that death, burial, and resurrection because one day we are all going to have a resurrection. And when you have been resurrected, if Jesus does not come back and you and I have been resurrected, can I tell you that the only thing that's going to matter is if you die with your faith in Jesus Christ, Amen. having obeyed his gospel. And you do that by not only believing but repenting of your sins, Acts 2.38, Acts 3.19, uh, Luke 13.3 uh, and 5. You got to repent. Repentance is a change of mind. You've made up your mind that you're done with the world. You're done with practicing sin. You're done with living the life that you're doing according to your will instead of God's will. And then you have to confess Jesus to be the son of the living God. And finally, according to Acts chapter 2, verse number 38, be willing to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. The first time that was preached, the Bible says in verse number 41, about 3,000 souls who gladly received the word were baptized, uh, immersed in water, covered in water for the remission of their sins. And the Bible says in Acts 2, 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord added to the church. God only adds to the church when you have heard the right thing doctrinal teaching, obey the right doctrinal teaching, and then you can be added to the Lord's church. And that is the church according to Ephesians 5.23. Jesus is the savior of the body, and he's going to save the body of Christ, which is also the church of Christ. So I don't know whoever you are. Today needs to be a day of celebration for Jesus' sacrifice. But if you have not obeyed and believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that good news that he died for our sins, Today needs to be your day to do that today. You can simply do that by contacting us at 502-966-5171. Or you can email us at newbergcoclouisville at gmail.com. Call one of our members. They'll get in contact with us. Our lines are open right now. And we're waiting on you to contact us. And we're a kind of church. No matter who you are, if you call us today, we can get you situated to get into the water because you got to be baptized to be forgiven of sin, according to Acts 2.38. So if you've been waiting and waiting and waiting, today is your day. We want you to call us and appreciate the sacrifice of Jesus. 
If you need to do that, please do that. Bombard the comment section today for those of you who have been watching, worshiping, and witnessing with us today. We just thank God for Jesus, and I hope and pray that the information has blessed your life to keep you to keep doing God's will, continue to go on, and God will never allow a Judas or anybody in your life to stop you if you have faith in doing God's will and trusting God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for Jesus. Yes. Oh, God, we love you. We thank you for this blessed Messiah in Jesus, our Christ, the anointed one who has went through the annals of time and decided to see us for who we were, the sinners that we were, and still be willing to die for us. Thank you for his death. Thank you for his burial. But most importantly, thank you for his resurrection, which proves to us that you have a resurrection power, not only for him, but also for us. Help some soul come to know the Savior so that we all can do God's will and do your will, O oh God. Thank you so much for the powerful, perfect, precious, pure blood of our Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ. Lord, we love him so much because of his death and how he died for us. Help us stay faithful to him no matter what and go through this life knowing that we, we know that you have the power to raise us in the judgment. If we keep our faith in Jesus Christ to save us until the end. Lord, we love you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right, everybody, it's that time where we partner together with you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please share this message with your friends, your family, or maybe there's just somebody that the Lord placed on your heart that needs to hear it. Go ahead and send it to them right now. Like it or love it. We pray that this word has blessed your life. May God bless you.